So I wasn't actually sure if I was even going to be able to review this movie because here where I live in Sydney, Australia, we are still under extreme lockdown. But thankfully, I was able to find a way to see it. And I went into this not really sure what to expect because based on what people had told me, it was like John Wick meets Lights Out meets Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets which sounds really weird but really awesome at the same time. So I went into this not really sure what to expect and I have to say I really really had a fun time watching this movie. It was a movie that just I finally got what everybody was talking about when they said it was completely crazy especially the ending the last 30 minutes but I had a really good time in it and I feel like this was basically James Wan just completely letting himself go and having fun. I feel like this is a horror movie made for horror movie fans. It's not for general audiences. I feel like this is a niche movie and it should be treated as such. Yes, it's cheesy. But I feel like, you know, it's cheesy in a very campy B-movie way and it's very self-aware. I feel like that's something a lot of people aren't really realising that I feel like James Wan went into this with the intention of making a cheesy movie because you can see obviously some of the dialogue, especially in the beginning, in the introduction, the hospital scene. There's no way they would have left that in there intentionally. Like, that acting was so bad, but it was on purpose bad. So, you know, this movie gives me a bit of Wes Craven, My Soul to Take vibes. It has a lot of different influences in it. You can tell there's been a lot of inspiration from a lot of different genres. And it's just like, this movie just felt like if you put all these different movies like Scream, My Soul to Take, an action movie, a haunted house movie, a police procedural movie, and just mixed it up in a blender, this is what you would get. So the first half of the movie, the first act, feels definitely like a typical James Wan haunted house movie. We've seen it before with Insidious and The Conjuring and this felt like it was the same. And then it just changes and turns into this action movie slash police procedural movie. And then the last 30 minutes in the third act are just... How do you even describe that? It was amazing though. I really enjoyed whatever that was defined as. Just pure craziness. Anyway, so... I really liked the score of the movie. I liked how the villain had his own score, his own music. It just, you know, they don't really do that a lot these days, I feel. And it's very much, an, you know, an homage to, like, 80s, 90s villains. But I enjoy it. And Gabriel, his phone voice, talking about movies from the 90s, it felt like it was Ghostface. Like, if you compare... The ghost face voice and Gabriel's voice you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference and one thing that really annoyed me about this movie is that Madison actually says she knows that the murder is about to take place of the doctor before it happens and the police just don't even arrest her they barely even question her they basically just let her go and like this woman Think about it from Lee Man's perspective. We have this woman coming in saying that her imaginary friend told her where the murder was going to happen and then they're just like, okay, go home. So this movie definitely had a lot of those typical horror movie cliches, you know, the haunted house, the abandoned mental asylum, the fog, the thunder, but you know what, I enjoyed it. I think it added atmosphere and I've always enjoyed a good cliche if it's done correctly. And James Wan definitely did it correctly. So the main spoiler, the big reveal in the last 30 minutes is that Gabriel is actually 
a parasite living on the back of Madison's head. So it's basically like Voldemort in the Chamber of Secrets. It's literally on the back of her head and it is controlling her. It's controlling her body, sharing her brain, making her commit the murders. And it's got these really creepy like little, little legs and arms that got detached in surgery when she was a kid. And yeah, it was pretty disturbing. Just a word of advice. Don't try to eat while you're watching this. I'm just warning you. So yeah, my first guess was that she was just going to be completely crazy and it was all in her head. And well, that she would be the killer, but that um, Gabriel would just be all in, in her head. But I'm really happy that they went this way. I think it was a lot of fun, especially that prison scene at the end. I could not help but laugh all the way through it. And, you know, people kept saying that it was crazy. And I'm like, oh, I doubt it's really going to be that crazy. But it is crazy. James Wan's mind is a scary place, but an amazing place. Anyway, so... This movie was a lot of fun if you go into it not trying to take it seriously. And I feel like the trailer just sort of trolled us all. Like, it was such a troll trailer. You know, we all thought it was going to be this typical insidious conjuring type movie. And then we got this. So I would give it 7 out of 10 popcorns. So... Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of it. Did you enjoy it or did you just think it was too much? And if you could like, subscribe, all of that, that would be great.